the final week of the regular season and senior night here at Waterloo as we get set for high school basketball action here on Finger Lakes One TV. It's the Penyan Mustangs taking on the Waterloo Indians. Hello everyone, I'm Brendan Harrington along with Dave Barnick and Kevin Korzaneski going with the three-man booth today. We've already decided that the roles for today, I'll play Sean McDonough. Here's Raftery. Onions. <laughs> and then, Kevin, you can take Jay Billis. You got to grow a little I bit, though. I wish I had his hair. <laughs> but so good to, to have everybody along. We have a great matchup coming up tomorrow night in Wayne County. And an interesting matchup here to wrap up in the FL East this year. And first of all, Kevin, let's start with this Waterloo team. It's been a difficult year for Coach Jeff Pennick, but some exciting moments with some young freshmen coming up to join the team. Yeah, um, to start off with Nick Stenberg, he's played in eight games now. He's the leading scorer on the team average-wise. Obviously, some kids have more points than him total, but the games he's been here, he's averaging 11 points. He's average double figures. He's playing 28 minutes a game. He's doing a fantastic job. He brings a terrific work ethic to the game, and he's kind of challenged some of the overclassmen, picked up the energy level, and it's really great to watch Nick succeed. Um, tonight you're going to see Jamin Mateo, another freshman, uh, who is a guard, very strong ball handler, heady player, really tough competitor, and he's given some great minutes to Waterloo as well. And uh, Waterloo's not playing for a home sectional game, so this will be our last game in this gym for the seniors. I believe Coach Panic is going to start all four seniors tonight. So that'll be exciting for those guys. They're going to try and close this out, maybe with an upset win over Penyan. And meanwhile, on the other side, Dave, a, a Penyan program under fourth-year head coach Jay Hollister that in his first year, three years ago, didn't win a single game. But they're on the way up. That's right, Brendan. Uh, winless, as you said, in his first year as coach. And it's nice that they stuck with the uh, SUNY Cortland graduate. His fourth year now, they went 4-14 four and 14 in his second year. 5-14 and 14 last year, including a sectional loss that ended their season against these same Waterloo Indians. And a chance, if they win their remaining two games, the first of two tonight, to finish at 500 and go into Section 5 play with a little steam. And this Penyan team at 7-9, seven 7-8 and nine, seven and eight in the Finger Lakes East, led by... A guy in the middle, James Burdett, 6'5", 236-pound forward, is a force to be reckoned with and did a lot of damage the first time these two teams played. Uh, a 21-point win back on January 8th for Penyan and Burdett with a monster night with 18 points, 11 rebounds, 7 of 9 from the field. And Kevin, when you look at a guy like that who, who takes up so much space in the middle defensively, if you're an undersized Waterloo team, what are some things you can do to try and stop him? Well, you, obviously Waterloo, like you said, is very undersized. That's what they let, will lack the most tonight, somebody to stop for that. But they got to try to pick up the tempo. You know, we watched Waterloo a couple weeks ago at Geneva, and the last thing they want to do is run up and down the court yeah. with Geneva. So maybe Waterloo tries to pick up the tempo, tire Burdett out. This is a very big court. Um, you know, use their quickness to try to counteract a little bit of that height and size. Uh, so we'll see what Waterloo does to contend with that. I think on the other end, they're going to have to sit back in a little bit of a 2-3 zone and really pack it in and see if Penyan can knock down the three-point shot. You guys mentioned this is the final week of the regular season as we get ready for sectional action. Waterloo pretty much locked into their situation as they look like they're going to be playing in that 8-9 game in Class B1. They'll match up with Midlakes most likely. Now if they get a win, they, they, they could perhaps pass Midlakes and host Midlakes in that 8-9 game. Uh, meanwhile, when you look at this Penyan team, they currently sit in fifth in Class B1 and uh, a chance to perhaps match up with a, a team like Livonia in the quarterfinals in what could be a winnable game. Well, the one thing I think that uh, Waterloo has going for them tonight is although they played a very poor opponent in uh, Romulus South Seneca, but they are coming off a win. It is senior night, and they are, uh, they're at home, obviously. So perhaps that confidence, along with the uh, work of Stenberg, uh, maybe gets them rejuvenated to hang in there long enough, and the longer that an underdog hangs in a game, uh, yeah. the greater their chances of pulling off the upset. 
and, and certainly Kevin and I saw it in the Geneva game. Really the first quarter and a half, I would say, and you've seen Waterloo more than, than I have, but probably as good a basketball as they've played all year as the underdogs against that very talented Geneva team. Yeah, they came out, Geneva was a little lax, and uh, Waterloo knocked down four or five threes in that first yeah. half and really tested Geneva limits that night. You can see the senior night festivities are underway Bradley down on the Steinrock, floor. His father and his sister Chelsea down there. Chelsea's a uh, point guard for the varsity team, quite a good player herself. So there's a little bit of basketball in this family. We'll let you listen in a little bit here on the senior night festivities. And I don't care what your record is, senior night always an emotional night. Yeah, and these guys get the advantage of having it on TV forever. Uh, and here's, here's, here's the crowd favorite, huh? Stu Caps. Stewie is well loved by everybody. He's got the Stewie, Stewie's crew over there. <laughs> and the big uh, posterized yeah, sign. They, they got shirts uh, with his picture on it. And Stewie's a great kid. And uh, he's well liked by his classmates, as you can tell. Now, we do have to mention that uh, there was an earlier this year where perhaps he got a little confused about which, which basket he was shooting on. No, that, was, that wasn't Stewie. Stewie oh. Yeah, no, that was another player. Stewie. Oh, somebody told me it was Stu before. No, no, no. Stewie's a heady player. He wouldn't do such a silly oh, thing. Oh, okay. And uh, we, uh, Stewie, remember, we were playing Geneva. They were down 40, 30 or 40. Stewie came in and made a layup, and the crowd kind of went nuts, woke oh, everybody up. Yeah, in yeah, here. yeah. And you see Stu right there. Yeah, and there's Tom France with his mother and sister, who was also on the girls' basketball team. Matt O'Brien. OB. Matt O'Brien. I wonder, Kevin, if you imagined being up here uh, on senior night, knowing all these Waterloo players years ago, after uh, proudly wearing that Minders blue for <laughs> your tenure. <laughs> I got a little bit of mix in my blood now. And you see this all across section five with different schools honoring the senior cheerleaders and players. Tough thing for uh, uh, some of the parents who have players on both teams, including the Steinrucks, the girls and the boys, because they play most of the games the same evenings. Um, actually, in the Finger Lakes, their weekend games, Friday night's a tough night, but usually they play Friday Tuesday, night. Wednesday, and sometimes the girls play Saturday, where the boys traditionally don't play Saturday. So um, throughout the week, you're, you're doing a lot of traveling, but Tuesday, Wednesday night, they try to separate. Um, and, uh, but there are going to be nights where you got to pick and choose. Well, guys, as we hit the final week of the regular season, things in the FLE still not settled, though they could be by the end of the night. Geneva has clinched a share of the title with Wayne, but if Geneva takes care of business today against Newark, they would win the title outright. So certainly Wayne will be pulling for the Reds in that game today. Yeah, and that would make for quite an atmosphere Friday night, or thir it must be Thursday night in Wayne, yep. because Friday night games no longer count for sectional points. So the game must be played Thursday night, and uh, I imagine even if Geneva wins that game, Wayne will bring quite a crowd to that. Well, uh, let me ask both of you, uh, do you think that one non-league loss uh, that Geneva has suffered, their only loss of the year, might be a blessing in disguise? If I'm, you know, you never want to lose a game, and if you have an opportunity to go undefeated, you want to take that opportunity. But there's a great chance Newark or Aquinas will, and Geneva will meet up again. So now the kids for Geneva, they're, they're not going to rest on anything. They're going to try a little bit harder. You know, the game's going to mean a little bit more to them. It's tough to beat a team twice in a season. So yeah. only time will tell what happens, but th th that might play to their advantage, Dave. I think the way, That's a good point. I think the way they lost the game, which was, was losing a late lead, they led Aquinas by nine at the end of the third quarter, and it kind of let things get away from them. Aquinas pressed, they turned it over. I think that, as much as anything, maybe they'll get something out of you know preparing them for a similar type game and later on. It's a great game for Geneva because they don't get that type of athleticism in the Finger Lakes East. Yeah. They, you know, they've had a lead going into every game uh, by at least eight or 10 points towards the end. And now all of a sudden, they have a little bit of a lead, but Aquinas brings a whole nother level of athleticism to the court that they're not used to seeing. So just that in itself can help them prepare for sectionals and the next time that they play in, which will probably be in the War Memorial. If you look, if Newark, you look. of course, pardon me, Brendan, uh, has been on a real roll, so it'll be interesting to see how much of the gap, if any, they've closed between those two teams. Yeah, we mentioned the B1 bracket before where Penyan currently sits in fifth. Newark has been 
pretty consistently in the number two spot behind a very good Batavia team out of the Monroe County League. So looks as if Newark will be the number two seed. And that's that's what's so great about the Finger Lakes East this year. You look at those top four teams, Geneva, Wayne, Newark, and Minders, and they all have the capability of winning a sectional title. It's yeah. going to make sectionals awfully exciting for local fans. Yeah, it, 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 I agree with you 100%. Obviously, the two teams are going to go up against each other in Geneva and Wayne. And, um, you know, Newark has a really good shot of winning, and Minders has a great shot. They're, they're going to pretty much, I don't want to say make it to the finals, but they should have a nice, easy road to get to the finals. And obviously, they have to play uh, Notre Dame uh, Batavia, which is a very tough team. This Only year. undefeated team left in yeah. Section 5. Minders currently third in Class C1 behind Addison and Notre Dame Batavia. As we get ready for tip-off here in just a few minutes, Waterloo taking on Penyan. And just uh, to mention, there's Jeff Panic, the former head coach at Geneva and at Midlakes, where he won a sectional title now at Waterloo. But I was just going to mention, tomorrow night we're going to have quite the regular season finale in the Wayne County League, speaking of a couple teams that are capable of going far in sectionals in Lions and Clyde Savannah. It's, it's rivalry week, right? Yeah, right. There you it go. It is rivalry week, and it'll be rivalry week again in uh, Wayne County tomorrow night. That should be an exciting game for you, Dave, and uh, Matt Verkey calling that game. It's well, maybe, Clyde and maybe Lions can pull the upset. Clyde and Lions, a uh, great rivalry over the years, and you know many rivalries have uh, kind of the intensity levels maybe notched down from what it used to be, but I think it'll be full board tomorrow night. Well, these two teams have been going at it an awfully long time in the Finger Lakes East. Waterloo and Penyan getting ready to do battle this final week of the regular season in Section 5. We're going to step aside and be back with starting lineups and tip-off. Section 5 basketball on Finger Lakes 1 TV. Attention Finger Lakes residents. Have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Madame Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Madame Maris and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Madame Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys to the incredible Colburn Park for a new season of Pilots Baseball and new memories for the whole family. It's a true family value. The Newark Pilots. See tomorrow's Major League stars today. For more information, go to NewarkPilots.com. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations, we've greeted you by name, planned with you the future, and stood by you we do and what we'll continue to do for generations into the future we might look different now but in the important ways we're exactly like we've always been stop in your local branch or go to mygenbank.com back in Waterloo as we get ready for Section 5 basketball action tonight out of the Finger Lakes East. And nice rendition of the National Anthem to get things started here. Yeah, eighth grade student Karina Soto sang us uh, the National Anthem tonight. And if you think she's a good singer, singer you guys should see her run. She's a, quite a track star and cross country star. And you'll see her name in the paper in the next four years. She's only an eighth grader, but she has been running varsity uh, for Waterloo for the past year on both uh, the track team and cross country. So great job to you, Karina, tonight, and uh, congratulations on the good rendition. And uh, we look forward to your athletic career in the next four years. One of your students, Jeremy, uh, uh, Kevin? Yes, as well? yeah, I've had Karina for uh, three years now, and uh, we, we, we run together. We do a running program here at school, and she started with us in sixth grade, and she's uh, really taken off with it. Let's get to the starting lineups, first of all, for Penn Yan. They come in at 7-9 overall, 7-8 in the Finger Lakes East, which is good for fifth place 
but a pretty big gap between fourth place Newark and fifth place Penyan. Starting at the point, Corey Grace, a 5'6", senior guard. The shooting guard is Shane Bloom, a 6'1", junior. Mired in a shooting slump, but averaging eight points per game. Eric Johnson senior. starts in the front court Number at one forward with Ben Covert, who was called up from the JV team midway through the year, starting at the other forward spot. And then James senior. Burdett, the Number leading scorer and rebounder for Penyans, senior. will start in the middle, averages 13 points, seven and a half rebounds per game. And for Waterloo, they'll start four seniors tonight on senior night. The four seniors led by Brad Steinruck, who starts every game, nine and a half points per game, a 5'10", 165 pound guard. The other three seniors are Thomas France, a six foot guard, Stu Caps, a 5'10", forward, Matt O'Brien, a six foot senior forward, and then the lone underclassman will be Jonathan Jones, a six foot, 140 pound sophomore who as we mentioned earlier, Kevin buried three three-pointers in the early going of that Geneva game. Yeah, three three-pointers in the first quarter, and then he came out and he hit his first in the second quarter. He started off the game four for four. Jonathan was absolutely on fire. I walked into school the next day, and his little brother comes in and says, hey, coach, I saw you on TV this morning. <laughs> I said, it might have been the computer. He goes, my brother watched it over and over and over again, and he hadn't even gone to school yet. He was, so Jonathan was excited about his performance against Geneva as Waterloo in the home white and Penyan in the visiting royal blue as we get ready for tip off. It'll be the big man Burdett going up against Jonathan Jones and not a surprise there that Penyan will open up with a basketball. Baseline scoop shot just misses from Eric Johnson and he'll draw the foul and head to the free throw line. That Waterloo started out with a little bit of man-to-man, -man, quite the mismatch on the jump. I don't know if I've ever seen quite a lopsided jump, gentlemen, as I did just now. I think that was 6'5 versus 5'9. Yeah, and give it away almost a hundo in the weight department. <laughs> <laughs> as the first free throw off the mark from Eric Johnson, who's a 60% free throw shooter, averages 7.5 points per game. One of the top students in his senior class but can't hit either one of his free throws there and it remains scoreless. And we'll see Penyan come out of the man-to-man. -man. Steinrich will push it over on the wing for France. Miss there, goes out of bounds and will stay with Waterloo. You know what's nice on these senior nights is if you can get a kid that normally doesn't start or play to get you a basket early, maybe get the team excited, the crowd excited. Uh, that, that always seems to give you a little bit of extra momentum. The Waterloo basketball, Brad Steinrich running the point. He's kind of been forced into that position this year, naturally a two guard. And well, Jonathan Jones, that classic mistake of getting up in the air, not knowing what he wanted to do with it. I think one of the keys is getting Burdett up in the air to try to get him in foul trouble yeah. is be another thing. They always talk about not losing your feet. You know, it's interesting talking with Jay Hollister, the coach for Penyan, he says, Burdett has not gotten the sympathy of officials. He's usually the biggest kid on the court and does get into foul trouble occasionally. That's, that's the old adage for the big man, though. You know, they just, they, they never seem to get all the calls that the guards do. And there's a travel called on James Burdett. It sounds like you know that from experience, Kevin. I always got a lot more calls and I'd give it a little <laughs> way a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Still looking for our first points, just past a minute in. As Steinrich dribbles all the way under the basket and will circle it back out. Thomas France, he has the ability to knock it in from the outside. Averages seven and a half per game. He'll drive all the way to the hoop, leaves it back for Caps, and he makes the extra pass, but O'Brien couldn't finish. Here comes I Penyan. There was a game that I coached actually against Jeff Panic when he was at Midlakes, and we started a senior that didn't play much and it only scored a few buckets on the year. And Jeff kind of laid off him and didn't let him, you know, wanted to see him shoot, you know. And uh, his name was Jake Maul. Jake Maul started off the game with two three pointers, and we had a 6 0 lead, and I don't think Coach Panic was very happy with that. He'll probably deny that story if you ask him. Well, that's a big shot right there from Shane Bloom. I mentioned before he's been mired in a shooting slump. A really good three-point shooter, but just three for his last 25 in the last five games and talking with Coach Hollister, just trying to get him going again. He played really well early in the year. And we're going to have a foul on the other end as Steinrich takes it to the basket. But 
I mean, this is a guy, Shane Bloom, scored 22 in the season opener, a 61-51 win over Newark. And guys, that really opened some eyes in the Finger Lakes East because we know how good Newark has been this year. Well, I remember seeing it. The guy was quite shocked. I knew Penyan would be a little bit better this year, but um, to beat Newark uh, in the beginning of the year like that was great for Coach Hollister and great for the Penyan program. And so Waterloo on the board, but Steinrich can't hit the second, so one of two from the line and a 2-1 game early on. Waterloo pitches, pushes quickly. Burdett right down Broadway, and that's going to be a jump oh, ball. Great, great defensive play. It looked like it was uh, Jonathan Jones who tied him up. And I thought with the position of the official that he might uh, get the call on the foul, but that was a clean block. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's the upside in the mismatch for the opening tip because now you get the ball on the alternating possession. And so Waterloo ball looking for their first field goal. Here's Steinrich, caught in the double team on the block. Needs help, O'Brien tiptoeing the baseline. Jones down to 15 on the shot clock. Both teams a little hesitant to pull the trigger early on. It's kind of a uh, slow paced game to start. We're getting about five seconds on the shot clock here for Jones, see what he does. Jones with a nice shot fake and then just can't get the roll on the up and under move. And the rebound comes down to Penyan into the front court. Here's Corey Grace, the point guard, had it stripped. Now brings it outside for Bloom. And Bloom will get it back to Grace. Almost has the feel of a big time game to start. The both teams seem a little jittery and sloppy with the ball. You must know it's on Finger Lakes one. Ball screen from Burdett. Bloom, pick and roll. Burdett, nice catch and finish. Yeah, Jonathan Jones really got to sit on the strong side of that Burdett here on the replay. He's got to get on that right hand to try and stop that uh, pivot into the, into the lane. That's just a little bit too easy. You know, stopping a pick and roll, Kevin, obviously communication is the biggest thing and having a plan going in, right? Well, you got to stay out on the hedge until the guy recovers, and uh, if you're going to switch it, switch it. But whatever you decide to do, you have to communicate with it. And so Burdett, who had 18 and 11 the first time these teams met, Gets on the board with an old-fashioned three-point play, and it's a 5-1 lead for the Mustangs. Good drive, getting turning the corner there, Thomas France, but couldn't finish. Penyan holds out of the offensive rebound. Steinrich, baseline, but ran right into a stationary Burdett, but it'll stay with Penyan. Yeah, great positioning by Burdett not to jump off his feet, and, and, and he's, you know, he didn't draw the contact. Steinrich did, I believe, and uh, it was a great no-call. Good, good position by Burdett. Approaching the midway point of the first quarter, Waterloo still looking for its first field goal. Jones' pass was a little bit behind him, so couldn't get the three off. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Mustangs usually play man-to-man. -man. They'll mix in a 1-3-1 zone once in a while. Another good drive. France turning the corner, but can't finish. That's kind of been the theme early on. Getting to the basket, but not able to put it in. And we'll have a foul here. Yeah, I don't know if they're, that they think Burdett's lurking in the paint in there and they missed a couple easy shots. Francis missed two of them himself. He's got himself in position to score, but he's got to go up and finish. I was thinking for the last couple of minutes, you start the seniors, you do the nice thing. How long does the coach go with that senior lineup out of sentiment before he goes to the bench? Well, we just got the answer. It's uh, four minutes into the game. The halfway mark of the period. So it was nice, of course, to do that, get the kids a recognition. Evan yells in, Nick Stenberg, and also a couple substitutions for Penyan as well. Good offensive rebound from Burdett. This is Bradley Voigt, a little out of control. Offensive rebound, wide open layup, oh. missed by Covert. And we're going to have a foul. We've got a technical foul yeah. on O'Brien. They technical. Looked like it was going to be a push off, but he's got a technical foul for O'Brien chattering something on the baseline. He must have been saying something. In fact, well, Coach Panic wants an explanation here. And you know, last thing you want to do on senior night, if you're a senior, is pick up a technical foul. Well, something must have happened in there because I, 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 you know, O'Brien's a pretty level-headed kid. He doesn't lose his temper too often, and uh, he's, a, he's a fierce competitor. But he seems pretty upset about something that happened down there, and I'm not sure what that would be. From the baseball starring O'Brien family, correct, Kevin? Yes, that is correct. Yep. It yeah, looks like. Shane Bloom is going to take the, the free throws. And Nick Stenberg checking in as well. I mean, Stenberg is 
Really been a spark for this Waterloo team. Had 21 in a game against Pal Mack. And in fact, his last three games, guys, averaging 17 points per game. So we'll see if he can get it going off the bench tonight. Yeah, also checked in is the other freshman, Mateo, has checked in. And he just came in for O'Brien. That was uh, deja vu all over again, seeing Joe's Pizzotto prancing on the sideline. Well, the one thing I've noticed from the camera uh, work from Jeremy Hunt is, is Coach Panic starting to look a lot like Coach Pizzotto from behind. <laughs> I have a comment on that when time permits as well. And I'm not one to talk. Well, you're, it, it's okay to make fun of somebody else's <laughs> hair situation if you have previously That's made right. fun of yours on the broadcast, and Kevin already took care of that right at the top. I'm watching all these guys that I broadcast when they played, like uh, Kevin and Coach Panic and Adam Stenberg's father, and I'm happy to say I've got more hair than all these guys. Yeah. We were talking, too, before the broadcast about you know, all these guys, uh, professional athletes and high-level college athletes whose kids are now starring at the collegiate level. They're everywhere. And you said, Brendan, just look at Michigan. Yeah. With Glenn Robinson the third, Tim Hardaway, Jr., I've had this strange feeling that Syracuse will match, meet up with Michigan sometime along really? the tournament. Yeah, the, the NCAA works in funny ways, doesn't it, sometimes, and, that, and that tournament committee? Bayheim, of course, uh, I guess had a lead role in recommending Beeline for one of his first Division like the One Lemoyne jobs. job, wasn't no. it? The Lemoyne job? One of his. Uh, that or, was he at Canisius as well? He was at Canisius, yeah. And, of course, a Finger Lakes East connection to John Beeline as well with Brian Miller, the head coach over at Geneva. A former assistant at Canisius was a grad assistant under Beeline. Yep. I had a cousin that played for uh, John Beeline down at uh, Richmond. The Spiders. The, he was a spider. Boy, that's, that's, right. a, that's a guy who's just had success everywhere he's been. Yeah, it fouled him all the way, and uh, he's done a great job. Loved his teams in West Virginia, yeah. and if for Ready. nothing else, I wanted to bring up the name Kevin Pitznagel. If it's whatever you can, you got to bring yeah. it up. Yeah, <laughs> big seven-foot three-point shooter, right? Oh, man, he was fun. To, that was a fun West Virginia team to watch. I would not want to incur the wrath of their current coach, <laughs> Mr. No. Huggins. No. No, indeed. And they've really struggled. I've been surprised how much they've struggled yeah, you in, know, uh, I'm in the really SEC this I'm year. I'm really interested to look how these, when the, these teams start to go into other tournament or um, conferences, how they're going to fare. And, and I'm really surprised I think that's how a West little Virginia does. But it, but it, and it's hard to look. West Virginia is probably going to be down this year in the yeah. Big East as well. But I, I'm really interested to watch it over the years, and I don't know if that's a good example because West Virginia probably wouldn't have been a top-tier Big East team as they usually are. Had quite the delay there. I think they were trying to get the foul situation straight, and finally we're back underway. It's 7-1 early. Penyan in the lead. Three and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter. Burdett at the free throw line. Squares up and makes a nice pass to Ben Covert who lays it in. Here's another guy. You know, we're talking about the JV guys from Waterloo getting pulled up during the course of the year. Ben Covert has been a real impact guy for Penn Yan being called up from JV. As we have a 30-second timeout right here. And uh, we'll thank one of our sponsors, Mede, Miris, and Ricky. have been helping us out all year long. Your hometown personal injury attorneys, if you've suffered a serious injury or accident want personal professional attention, call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911 for a free, no-obligation phone consultation. Visit them online at MedeMirisRicky.com. Well, certainly not the uh, kind of start that Coach Panic and the Waterloo fans had hoped for, trailing 9-1 early. And they're not the type of team that you would think would play a lot of quick catch-up. So uh, they need to start chipping away at this and not let the game get out of hand here early. Yeah, Kevin, really kind of the opposite of what we saw in that game against Geneva. Yeah, Waterloo is really slow to start, and uh, I don't even know if they've attempted a three-point shot yet, but that was Geneva's 1-3-1 yeah. that allowed them that corner shot. And now Penny Ann switched to a zone here after the timeout, so maybe they can get a three and knock it down. There's an open look from Stenberg in the corner. Can't get the roll. And the Mustangs with the rebound looking to run. Pass out ahead a little bit too far from Pearl. Andrew Pearl is coming to the game. He's the backup point guard that really splits time, talking with Coach Hollister, splits time with the starting point guard, Grace. And there's a bucket and a foul from Burdett. That was a great look by Voigt. Caught the ball on the baseline against a 2-3 zone. Burdett went from high to low post, and it was a great pass here by Voigt. And a chance for Burdett to uh, complete two of the old-style three-point plays. He's just too big inside right now for Waterloo to handle. They're, they're packing in the zone, but they got 
Evan Yells, number 22 inside there, trying to stay with him. Just too much size right now for Penyan. Bradley Voigt with the offensive rebound on the missed free throw from Burdett. And that makes it 13 to one and another timeout called by Waterloo. Well, we might have the longest first quarter of our season. <laughs> yeah, between the delay, us. between the delay and now back-to-back -back timeouts called by Jeff Panic. There's uh, Lauren Deming for Waterloo. She'll be on Weber on Sports come Monday morning at 9.30 and her teammate Lindsey Johnson will be joining the web dog Harold Weber. Uh, Monday morning, so check on that. And they're having a great season. One loss, and uh, the number one seed heading into sectionals. And their competition should be Newark sometime in the semifinals. Newark um, will have to play Mid Lakes, I think, to get to Waterloo, who receives a bye. And that'll be a good 1 4 game, even if Mid Lakes gets there. Mid Lakes got a nice girls' team as well. Wow. So, um, you know, that'll be a big test for Waterloo, who's looking to try and win a sectional title this year. That game we covered, I was most impressed with Deming's play. I mean, Waterloo, a good all round team. But Deming does a lot of things that a lot of the other players you don't see do. She, she knows to go to the weak side to try to pick up the uh, offensive rebounds. and She's and, always uh, on the ball, isn't yeah, she, Dave? And no matter what happened, heady. whether she took the shot, made the pass, real heady, she works extremely hard. And uh, it was one heck of a ball handler. She's a great kid all around, and it's good to see her having so much success in her athletics. And looks like Ben Yan will go back to the 2-1-2 two -two zone. As Waterloo still looking for its first field goal. Here's a three-pointer from Steinrich. No good, but sneaking in for the rebound, but a missed layup inside from Evan Yells. Back the other way. Maybe an extra step there. There's the call. Yeah, Waterloo seems to have a lid on that basket out there, don't they, guys? You know, they just, they're getting good shots. Got a couple good three-pointers. You know, Yells did a great job getting the offensive board, but just can't finish. They take it to the hole, but then they get a little tentative, yeah. apparently, and just don't finish. You had a shot chart right now for Waterloo. You see a lot of empty circles right around the paint area. And it looks like we're going to have an offensive foul here out of an illegal screen against Waterloo. Oh, they got Brad Steinrich with the foul. That's already six team fouls as well. And you look up there, guys, you got a big differential in score, 13 to 1, and then fouls are 6 to 1, not helped by the technical as well. Because that counted as a team foul. So tough start for the Indians in this one. And they're down low, going to work. Burdett splits the double team, and he already has seven. You'd like to see somebody take, you know, you, you, you see size sometimes, but sometimes they stand in the middle. Burdett is not doing that. He is having a feast down there against Waterloo. He's really being aggressive, trying to take the ball to the basket, which he should do time and time again tonight. I'm talking with Jay Hollister, head coach for Pena, and he said he kind of felt like offensively his team was getting away from its bread and butter, which is finding different ways to get the ball inside to Burdett, and he really wanted to kind of refocus on that here in these last two games. Well, you know, Burdett's had an outstanding first quarter offensively as he's going to get a little break here. However, the one flaw I see in this game, and it's, it's okay against a smaller Waterloo team, but he keeps the ball kind of low when he starts his offensive moves, and I can see that could cause problems against uh, some more for formidable opponents. Well, Nick Stenberg wasn't ready for the ball to be delivered to him right there and actually took it off the face and out of bounds and kind of sums up the start for Waterloo so far. I want you to make sure you say a lot of nice things about him tonight because his grandfather is the Seneca County Sheriff. Oh, boy. So be well, careful and we'll drive that, at the speed limit. <laughs> we'll blame that on the passer there. I mean, <laughs> obviously wasn't ready. <laughs> Got to be aware. And Waterloo gets it back off the turnover. Here's a three ball from Steinrich. Still lit on the basket. No field goals yet for the Indians. Yeah, Waterloo's got to get getting a lot of looks versus the zone, but they can't knock it down. I, I thought Penyan was doing a better job in their man-to-man, -man, although they've only given up a point, so you can't fault them too much for oh. doing anything defensively. Well, they got a ways to go to top uh, the longest drought I've seen this year. I did a Canandaigua game where they didn't score in the first quarter and a half and didn't get their first field goal until under two minutes left in the first half. Oh, boy. Coach Broderick must have been wanting to hide under a stone that night. As the miss there from Shane Bloom. It did generate one of the greatest chants from the Pittsburgh Sutherland student section, which was, this is awkward, <laughs> <laughs> when it was 17 to nothing midway through the second quarter. Yeah, we're getting there here. <laughs> Picking up his dribble, nowhere to go. And 
We're yep. going to have a, a foul. foul on Pearl. Bailout foul. Yeah, that was Robert Barnes, number 10, who picked up his dribble. Guy doesn't get a ton of time. That's Mateo. Or Mateo, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong. That's no, Barnes, yeah. Yeah, he used to have number 10. Yeah, Barnes used to be on the varsity yeah. team. He's now, he's now on the JV team. Jamin Mateo. All this talk about Mateo, and then I still have the old number 10 on the roster. And another three ball off the mark. Jonathan Jones, and that's the end of the first quarter. With the score, Penyan 15, Waterloo 1. We'll step aside and be back for the second quarter on Finger Lakes 1 TV. Attention Finger Lakes residents, have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Madame Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Madame Maris and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Madame Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. The Newark Pilots. See tomorrow's Major League Stars today. For more information, go to NewarkPilots.com. Back in Waterloo as we look up at the Wall of Fame. Some notable Waterloo sports alumni. Tom Coughlin, Super Bowl 42 and 46 champions, each time slaying the mighty Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. But then... May the Schweitz be with you. John Schweitz, Seattle Supersonics, 84 to 85, and the Pistons in 86, and then Mike McLaughlin, former NASCAR driver. One little correction. John Schweitz was also briefly with the Boston Celtics. Ah. Waterloo down 15 to one here in the early stages of the second quarter. Penyan basketball to start out. Corey Grace back in running the point. That's Scott Walker, big man comes on in relief of Burdett. Ball batted around in the paint and finally a jump ball. Well, the one thing I noticed without Burdett in there, Penyan, it's not, they're not much taller than Waterloo. You know, with the lone exception is, is Burdett, 22. Um, he, he, Scott Walker, 6'6", but he doesn't look too imposing no. out there like Burdett does. No, he uh, doesn't have nearly the same kind of strength. 6'6", 170. And pass a little bit behind. Got, got to Nick throw a bounce Stenberg. pass there. Yep, that was Matt O'Brien throwing behind Stenberg. And so, 7-17 to play in the second quarter, and still without a field goal, the Indians. Brendan Harrington, along with Dave Barnett, Kevin Korzaneski, the three-man booth today. Jim Sinekrope, your producer and director, Jeremy Hunt on camera, and there's a bucket inside. That is Jeff Sheik. Nice move by Sheik, strong move inside. You talk about this Waterloo scoring drought, and there it ends. There we go with 6.53 left to go in the second quarter. Finally, Brad Steinrich with the field goal to make it 17 to three. And the good thing from a coaching aspect is you're down 14, but the only te other team only has 17. Yeah. So if you just start to make a few baskets, you're gonna get right back into it under 10 with, it, with a few minutes. Yeah, it's not that insurmountable, you're right. Well, the thing about Steinruck, not only is uh, he Waterloo's leading scorer, he's their only scorer. Yeah. Now the inside, this is Eric Johnson traveling. But the thing in the scoring drought, the one that kills me is if I'm at a Syracuse game and I got to keep standing yeah. and clapping until they finally get that first field goal. What was it, Alcorn State this year? In the second half, they I think they went to the under-12 <laughs> media timeout before they scored. Well, the Nova game, they went through the uh, first timeout. It's been, a, you know, it's been a hot topic in college basketball this this season. I think it should be, and scoring has been down and downright atrocious at times. I heard a stat the other day that it's three points lower than it was two years ago. It got a point and a half lower the year before, and then a point and a half this year. Yeah. And the lowest since it's been in the 60s. Correct. And I, Jay Billis is all over it, and I, and I agree with Jay. The referees are letting a lot of body contact go, and it's really become a physical, physical game. And the coaches are teaching the players, get your chest, get your stomach up into people, and they're allowing that to play. And hands as long off, as, as lo yeah, no hands, yeah. but as long yeah. as that's being allowed, a lot of shots are being affected, and uh, it's, it's making a low-scoring game. Penyan on the inbound here, leading 17 to three, and Burdett back into the game, and quickly a foul on Waterloo, and that will push 
Burdett and the Mustangs into the bonus. Bonus with 5.46 to go, and I notice Coach Panic is really playing behind Burdett. They don't, they're not doing a lot of fronting, and, and I didn't catch the first game, but sometimes as a coach you say, we'll front the guy, and we'll get some help in the back, but then you get really hurt on rebounding. So, you know, I, I think Burdett, you mentioned, had nine or ten rebounds the last time they played, and maybe that's why they're trying to play behind Burdett. It's, it's not working too far because he's getting to the line, and he's getting his points. If, you, if you're going to go... Um, one-on-one -on -one with Burdett, though. You've got to maybe the body can be behind or at least partly behind, but you got to have the extended arm out in front. Yeah, and uh, the one thing I haven't seen from Burdett tonight is the ability to go left, maybe sit on that right hand a little more. Uh, maybe it's there, but with his size, he probably can do whatever he wants. He struggles from the free throw line as well, 56% of the year he missed the front end. We should also add that Matt O'Brien just picked up his third foul and had to leave the game. Remember, the technical counts right. as a personal foul, so that's gotten him into foul trouble big time. And there's a collision right on the center circle. And Brad Steinrich, he was offered a hand by Eric Johnson to get up to his feet, and Steinrich. Yeah, sometimes that happens refused. in the play, you know. Yep. They're, they, you know he went for the ball, he uh, you know, knocked him down, but I think it was on accident. He did offer the hand to back up, and Brad kind of lost his cool there a little bit. And, uh, and it's real easy and sometimes justified to get on the case of the officials, but I thought the official just did a real nice job of just taking them to the side a little, telling them, okay, you know, cool it a little bit here, yeah. keep it under control, nice job. Yeah, he did a great job diffusing that situation. And, uh, you know, Eric Johnson knocked him down, but he did a good job offering the, to help him up. Plus, you get more frustrated when you only won three games throughout a season and the senior yeah. night yeah, you're senior getting, night you're getting, getting three swamped. points with five minutes to go. Waterloo basketball down 17 to three, 515 to play in the second quarter. This is Jonathan Jones, and there's a bump. I talked to Coach Panic before the game, and he knew that certainly uh, he had his work cut out for him this year. He's not overly surprised, but he looks for better things ahead. And, of course, he does have a couple of the youngsters starting to play more minutes for him. Yeah, the JV team's playing good. The modified teams, there, there's some talent. Waterloo's just in a little bit of a down spiral here these, this year or two. And uh, Coach Panic and the Waterloo Indians will back in the mix of things in a couple of years. Of course, they thumped a very a very bad uh, Ryan and South Seneca team. But uh, when we get a moment, maybe that Finger Lakes West situation, which turned, had an ugly turn with Honeyoy canceling their season. Yeah, we'll, we'll chat about that maybe a little bit at halftime. Yeah, Romulus South Seneca, Waterloo won that game 81-37. to Two of their three wins, in fact, this year against Romulus South Seneca, yet to win a game. Yeah, it's a turnover on the travel there. We'll send it back over to Now, does to anybody know if Romulus okay. South Seneca has honey oil left on the schedule? <laughs> no. Because that could be their... They do not. They don't have them. They they does that count play. as a win? That would count it as a win, yeah. Red Jacket got a 2-0 win the other night. Yep, 2-0. It goes into the books as a 2-0 win. Here's what I want to know. Does that count towards your uh, points per game and points allowed per game <laughs> averages <laughs> on the year? Because it would kill your offensive points per game, but it would help your defense. Well, what it does count for is, is sectional points, and yeah. that's all the coaches well, care about. I still remember having a coach... Uh, uh, that Great football coach, Mar Rich, and he always said it's a lot easier or a lot to stick with something when you're winning uh, than it is that when you're having a season like Waterloo's been having or South Seneca Romulus has been having. Brad yeah, everything's magnified in a season like this. Bradley Voigt to the free throw line. He's just a 41% shooter, and right now the Mustangs are just three of seven from the free throw line, but Voigt able to hit the first there to make it 18 to three. Yeah, Romulus South Seneca, that's been a tough situation in and of itself over there. They merged the programs. We saw them earlier this year against Naples. A bunch of kids from South Seneca don't come out for the team, and uh, it is it has not worked well with the merger. No, it's been a bad situation. Seneca Falls and uh, Waterloo looking at a merger right now currently with the same study that they did. Well, they don't have the problem in the athletics that uh, those two schools did. South Seneca didn't have the numbers in some of their sports. Right. Well, it kind of depends on the sports, too, guys, because uh, they've been very successful combining yeah. some of their sports. But that's the way it goes. Nice dish there from Corey Grace to Shane Bloom in transition. That kind of reminded me a little bit of the uh, play of the Syracuse game the other day as Steinrich able to hit the three ball there, and that makes it 21-6. I was thinking of that play where uh, 
Brandon Trish was able to throw it down on the long pass to James Sutherland. Great to see him back in the lineup if you're an SU fan. Now Steinruck, first point was a free throw. His second point oh, was a going. two point basket. Now he just hit the trifecta. One, so if two, he should three. throw one up from 30, we can give him four points. But what happens after that? A five point play, you'd have to hit a three, maybe get a technical, <laughs> and then two free throws, I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, Burdett's going to go back to the free throw line, and that is the second foul on Steinrich. So Steinrich with two fouls now. You already have O'Brien out of the game with three. And meanwhile, Burdett continues to be perplexed at the free throw line as to how to knock one down, but an offensive rebound from Brantley Voigt. A lot of frustrated looks on Waterloo out there. Pena doing a great job on the boards. There's just body in Waterloo all around, and uh, Nick Stenberg's got to get a body on that shot for, you know, right now. Tom France is undersized. He's got Burdett right next to him, but you got to get your butt into him and get him out of the lane. It's simple basketball. First shot up and in from Voigt. When you look at Burdett, and he was just one of four from the line for Pena and their loss to Minders on Saturday, and now has struggled at the line one of four tonight. Maybe you think Hackashack. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything to rhyme with Burdett that had to do with <laughs> fouling him. There's a miss from Voigt. Well, well they, got, they got to get it closer than 16 before they start Hackashack, you know. <laughs> It'll be a really long first half. <laughs> It'll be uh, senior night for the juniors. I was going to say, rate. you guys just <laughs> head over to Clyde right now and uh, get that Clyde Lions game started. Now both teams in the bonus. And down on the other end, we're going to get some free throws from Evan Yells. Junior lefty, too strong off the back iron. Still nobody else in the scoring column for Waterloo other than Ben Steinrich. And he is on the bench right now with two fouls. So somebody else is going to have to step it up if Waterloo wants to put more points on the board. This is Voigt. Oh, nice no-look pass, and the layup from Ben Covert. That's another nice pass by Voigt. It was good ball movement by Penyan. Everybody a little patient. They whipped it around. They got a nice-looking shot for a layup. There's a three-pointer, Thomas France. I see London, I see France from downtown. And it's 24-9. Waterloo with a little bit of full-court pressure. Got a trap and a timeout by Coach Hollister. So a timeout, a 30-second timeout, and we'll keep it right here. Here's another look at that no-look pass from Bradley Voigt. Bradley Voigt, one of two players on the Penyan roster with a Division I scholarship offer. Voigt has uh, verbally committed to play for Syracuse, and meanwhile, James Burdett will be heading to U Albany, same school as Shane Sweeney, who will be playing football couple well, of good lacrosse Danes. players. Yeah. Lacrosse, I was going to ask if that was yeah. the sport. Uh. It's Penyan. I, mean, I, I didn't think I even had to mention it. But it's Penyan, right? <laughs> right. You know it's it, going to be lacrosse. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, and you, I, I chuckle at that. We just saw the bucket from, from Ben Covert. Ben got his chance to play varsity as we look at a couple notable Penyan sports alumni. It was Chris like, Chrissy, wasn't it? From Penyan? Okay. Yeah, I think they called him Chris, last name Chrissy. Yeah. That's what, that was yeah, short for that. Yeah, that was his nickname. But uh, I'll get back to my story on Covert here in a minute as we're at three minutes left to play in the half. 24-9, Penyan in command. Shot clock running down. Going to have to hurry, and Burdett gets the pass and lays it in. Too easy. Too easy. Just got inside, great position. He could have been a half foot shorter. With that position, he's going to score. Or yeah, get it fouled. is. I agree with you. It's too easy. However, that time he was sitting in the lane for a little bit. And yep. uh, but Voigt picks up another assist. Yeah, pretty Voigt. easy to get assists when you're passing it down to Burdett, who's six five, going against a bunch of six foot players, isn't it? Yeah, Burdett now with nine points to lead all scores. And open on the inbound, three pointer rims out from France. Penyan with a rebound, looking to run with it. Here's Voigt again. He'll back it out, and right down Broadway, Burdett blows by three defenders and draws the foul. Burdett showing his ball handling ability. Took him from the top of the key, exploded by the Waterloo defender, and got himself uh, an easy layup and a foul. I think we've seen that today. He's not just a back-to-the-basket post player. He's been able to drive the basket a couple times. But this, is, this has been his Achilles heel at the free throw line. Just one of four tonight. Not a good form there, but he rattled it home. 
and he's already in double figures. Double figure scoring for the 12th time this year for the 6'5 senior. And second shot off the mark. So right now, 27 to nine, Penyan tripling up Waterloo. Indians with the basketball. Pass swatted out of bounds. Kevin, uh, when you coached, what was your general routine in terms of practicing free throws, having your players practice? Well, hopefully by the time they get to the varsity level, they have a good form. If they don't, you got to work with kids individually, and, and, and Burdett might need some individual work. He really gets the ball over the shoulder. But we always tried to practice free throws for about 15 minutes a night. You know, some point of the practice, we do, sometimes we'd get them on the foul line, make, make them shoot 20 in a row. And maybe towards the end of the practice, they'd shoot front end of one of runs. We would do discipline if they missed. We'd do team shooting. There's, you know, there's a there's a bunch of things you can do. But the bottom line is you got to spend time on it, and and you hope the kids spend time on it on their own. And when they don't, you can tell you're a bad foul shooting team. You need to you need to incorporate it into a daily routine of your practices. Jonathan Jones going to head to the free throw line now, and he hits. And here's a kid that spends a lot of time shooting right here, and you can tell he's got a nice stroke and. Uh, his foul shooting is, has been good this year and will get better each year. He knocks down his free throws. There's obviously a couple aspects to it. You have the, the technique aspect to it, but then there's a big pressure component in free throw shooting as well. That's where Kevin talks about, you know, simulating things in pra practice where if you miss, you have to run, doing team activities where your shot, you know, other teammates are depending on it. And, it, and obviously it's a big mental. Yeah. You know, if you look at uh, Plumlee for Duke this year, he's always been a 50% free throw shooter, and now he's up in the high 70s. Um, and what they did to change his is that Krzyzewski told him, don't dribble, step and shoot. And uh, it's worked wonders for him, and it's, it's made his game a lot better this year. And there's the young freshman, Mateo, Laying it up and in for two. And a freshman mistake after he scores, he kind of trots back when he should have been in the press. And uh, I'm sure Coach Panic will let him know about that at halftime. Oh, the lob and an easy bucket for Burdett. And 12 points now for Burdett. He's making it look easy. 31 to 13. Quick release on the three ball there off the mark from DJ Darling. Well, that's an interest. I have an interesting parallel when time permits on that foul shooting. And three ball from the corner is too strong from Bloom. But guess who? Burdett underneath and draws the foul. Well, let's hear it. We got all the time in the world. Yeah, all these foul well, shots, Dave. The, the official was going to let that go if he I made think it. He did. Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, I, I called the second too. lace while well, he hacked he him, so he I better put him in the line. He missed the shot. I got but to call the foul. You mentioned Krzyzewski saying don't dribble. And Phil Mickelson, who had all kinds of putting problems, his old golf coach came in to help him with putting and said, don't take those practice putts before uh, just get up there. Step up and hit. And, and, and he had that, of course, awesome tournament uh, a week ago, a week and a half ago. The lot, it's, it's very similar, shooting, a foul shot, and putting in golf. And you, if you ask Jim Sinekropi, he knows he's not very good at either. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We've enjoyed your uh, tenure here at Finger Lakes that one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I remember we had to shoot. 50 foul shots at the end of every practice and log, log the results. Yeah, I th as a coach, it's important to tell the kids to keep track. We always did little competitions when, you know, if we told the kids go shoot 30 in a row and, and pick a partner and, and then they would, you know, try to keep track themselves. Kids won't pay attention unless you tell them to. And, and geez, when I shot foul shots, I always knew what I was shooting in, in practice. Burdett, by the way, I'm keeping track of his free throw shooting and now just two of eight. Meanwhile, Waterloo looked like they lost it, got it back, and Jones a little bit out of control of the baseline, but Scott Walker was stepping on the baseline when he caught the ball, so it'll stay with Waterloo. Well, it hasn't played a factor yet as free throw shooting, but if Penyan wants to go into sectionals, Burdett's got to be the one that's going to yeah. carry him, and he's got to get out on that foul line and be a little more confident in himself. Shot clock is off, 26 seconds left to play in the half, 31-13, Penyan, and there's the steal from Grace. And lead pass out in front, and yeah, Bradley Boyd trying to get a little bit too cute there with the volleyball set, if you will, for Jeff Sheik, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, he uh, should have just grabbed the ball, and he went in himself, trying yeah. to be unselfish and fancy, just make the play. Now there was an opportunity right there. A Waterloo player, if they were heads up, just could have taken the game ball and kept running with it. Yeah. 
Like Bo Jackson did some years ago <laughs> in that uh, Monday, I think it was a Monday night game. What a great documentary that was. I was did you guys oh, see the 30 I watched for 30? it the other night. Oh. Good call. And my favorite part, this will be probably a little bit too young for you, but my favorite part of that was the, the Tecmo, Tecmo Bowl shots, which is a video <laughs> game where Bo Jackson was unbeatable. Just give the ball to him. He could, nobody could tackle him. <laughs> That's the end of the first half. Pen Yan with a 31 to 13 lead over Waterloo behind 12 points from the big man, James Burdett. Could have been a whole lot more had he hit at the free throw line, but Pen Yan in firm control of this one. We're gonna step aside and take a timeout. We'll come back and we'll address what happened over in the Finger Lakes West at Honeyoy and handicap the Finger Lakes West race for you, among other topics coming up at halftime. So stay with us on Finger Lakes One TV. Attention Finger Lakes residents, have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Madame Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Midday, Maris and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Midday, Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Come out to the incredible Colburn Park for a new season of Pilots Baseball and new memories for the whole family. It's a true family value. The Newark Pilots. See tomorrow's Major League Stars today. For more information, go to NewarkPilots.com. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generation Bank, we've greeted you by name. Continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch or go to mygenbank.com. Back at Waterloo High School, Brandon Harrington, Dave Barnett, Kevin Korzaneski, along with Jim Sinecropi and Jeremy Hunt. Penyan in command, 31 to 13 at halftime. And guys, last week of the regular season, and uh, we alluded to it in the first half, but uh, something you hate to see over in the Finger Lakes West, Honeyoy will not finish its season as they had to forfeit their final three regular season games and will not participate in sectionals it was announced yesterday uh, because of an alleged hazing incident that took place on a team bus and uh, certainly unfortunate to see that happen there and it's going to have an impact on who's going to win that league absolutely honeyway was in the running they were in first place they were yeah. in first Just place one loss. And, and naples uh and second i believe yeah and bloomfield right behind yeah and now th they're out and I don't know how many kids were involved in the incident. Six players Six altogether players were suspended. Suspended and um, five days from school, five days additional, no extracurricular activities, and it was up in the air whether or not they were going to participate in sectionals. But that decision just came down from their superintendent yesterday uh, that they will not participate in sectionals. Now, Section Five had a decision to make, which was, you know, do you keep Honeyway in their slot based on their points, and then whoever they match up with gets a forfeit win, or do you just slide everybody up? in terms of points in the seating, and yep. that's what they're going to do, yeah, which is fair. Yeah, that's probably the smart thing to do. You but know, it's you, not fair for a you, team. You can't give a bye to somebody that really doesn't deserve yeah. to advance to the second round. You bump everybody up. And, and, and it's unfortunate for the kids that had nothing to do with it yeah. that their season got suspended. And you don't know, at least I don't know, uh, I have no idea what that hazing was. I do like the fact that uh, the Honeyoy folks took time to weigh uh, what decision to ultimately make. And I did read one article that uh, one of the senior uh, players' fathers was in full accord with the punishment. Yeah. And uh, you've been also, um, Kevin, uh, on numerous team buses as a coach. And it can be kind of raucous, and you just maybe think the kids are, well, they're making a little noise, but they're having a good time. And um it's well, just you very, know, very sad. And, and you, you guys may have more inside information, and not that I'm all that particularly interested in it, but uh, just from uh, the standpoint of it's a sad situation. Uh, the quotes I've been reading from the superintendent of Honeyoy 
uh, I like what he said as far as, you know, we're going to move forward. It's unfortunate. It's a learning experience. And, and um, I, I was sad uh, they lost their coaches. Two yeah, res I was going to say resignations. The, the, the JV and varsity and, coaches and, uh, both resigned. Their coach, uh, Coach Parshall, uh, used to be involved with the DeSales program and was at Honeyway when my son played. And I uh, uh, don't know him well, but very kind of mild-mannered. Seemed like a really nice guy and have no idea what happened. But as you know, also, as a teacher, coach, uh, a lot of pitfalls um, these days. So, Yeah, you know, something that you might think uh, happened to me when I was a kid, and it's all part of being on a sports team. Uh, it's a different time in society, and you got to be careful what's going on. If uh, you're, you're in charge of the bus ride, you got to be aware of the things that are happening. And if you're aware of the things that are happening, allowing them, you got to say to yourself, you know, what, what are the repercussions? You know, how serious is this? And I don't know a lot about the incident either, so I can't comment on it. Comment on it, but um, really, we have to trust the judgment of absolutely. the Honeyway superintendent yep. and the Honeyway school board, who have seen tapes from the bus that were recorded using infrared cameras that, uh -huh. that really show you a lot of what happened. And they can't comment on the specifics because right. of privacy laws. Mm -hmm. But we really have to to trust their judgment. Now, you mentioned the one parent who supported the decision. There have been several parents, uh, including the the uh, mother parents, of Ben right? Kratzley, uh, the their 1,000 point yep. scorer, yep. who has come out against the decision and said that these kids have been punished too harshly. So, you, I mean, it's divided a lot of people in terms of thinking, you know, on the one aspect, you, you have to hold kids responsible for the action. Other people saying this is, you know, an example of a hypersensitive society. Yeah. Boys will be boys. And, you know, we're not going to know exactly what happened. It, it's a shame that it happened. I say not only is it a shame for the Honeyoy kids who had nothing to do with it, I think it's a shame for the other kids in the Finger Lakes West who had nothing to do with it. You only get to play 18 varsity games. Now you play one less yep. if you're Naples. Uh, if you're jacket. Bloomfield and Red Jacket, and I mean, even if you you know win the league title, people are going to say, yeah, but mm -hmm. um, you didn't earn it. So yeah, it's a shame. But uh, with that said, Naples and Bloomfield, Naples playing tonight at HAC. If they win, they clinch a share of the Finger Lakes West, and then Thursday they are at Red Jacket. If they win both, they will uh, they control their own destiny. They would win the title outright. But with that said, uh, what a year for Naples basketball, my alma mater. Yeah. And congratulations to Mick Salter and that entire crew down there. They really play. Good defensive basketball, tough together. Uh, Mr. Salter, a guy who I played for and, and now is back as varsity coach in his seventh year after coaching uh, a large stint during the 80s and 90s. It's 14-2. and two. That, that hasn't happened in a long time uh, down in the Naples Valley, and so congratulations to those guys. Absolutely. A very long time, in, indeed. Uh, in fact, I think you were giving me some grief I for was, that well, in an email, weren't you? I was basically <laughs> trying in a, uh, my typically – somewhat sarcastic way at times to tell Mr. Sinecropi that I was not going to be over missing on, uh, on Naples South Seneca Rhymus game because if you remember I correctly stated that I expected their team yes. to fare even worse well, and, and they and have. And even to be fair to be honest and talking with Coach Salter he knew the team you know could have a good year I don't know if 14-2 uh, you know maybe has even surpassed his expectations but uh and they did have a, a juggernaut back in the 50s. They won uh, four <laughs> yeah. titles in six years. Now, it, yes, it has been since uh, the the, uh, the Eisenhower administration since they last won a sectional <laughs> title, but, you know. Yeah, Waterloo going through I, the same thing. I, I, I <laughs> thought I, I watched the movie Lincoln, and I could have swore <laughs> I, I saw somebody wearing a Naples uh, jersey. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> but uh, so 31-13, your score. As we talk about sectionals, I mean, let, let's talk about this Class A for a minute here, guys, before we, we get to the second half. Jim, do you want to break before the second half, or you just want to keep it right here? Okay. Um, it's going to be interesting. I, I cannot wait for the Class A tournament to get underway and especially when you look at the top of that bracket with Geneva and Wayne out of the Finger Lakes East and then you throw in Charlotte a very good team out of the out of the City League and then Aquinas I mean those those two semifinal matchups could be huge yeah if all teams get there to yeah. the semis you're looking at a, a very good night of basketball um, somewhere some night and, and if you're a fan of basketball I would uh, that'd be a ticket I'd be w worth buying. You know, Wayne will probably play uh, Aquinas, and I believe Geneva is going to be matched up against Charlotte. Yeah, right now there, there still could be some, some shuffling that goes around. Charlotte is the one, Geneva is the two. Aquinas is up to the three. Uh, actually, they're tied with Wayne. The exact same number of sectional points. It'll depend on what happens down the stretch. Um, 
Aquinas, of course, plays a, a top-notch schedule. I think they played Bishop Timon uh, last night. They, they yeah. seem to be getting better yeah. as the year goes along, though. Yep. So Well, Geneva, as we know, is uh, proving to be the cream of the crop in the Finger Lakes East, and we'll be surprised and disappointed if they don't make some real noise in, in their uh, uh, classification. But what I noticed, uh, <coughs> teams that are, are pretty good, but smaller school-wise in their particular leagues, uh, have a great chance usually to do well and then and I'm speaking or pointing towards minders yeah who uh, you know are one of the top tier teams but a notch below uh, Geneva and and Wayne this year however they're a smaller enrollment school and uh, should have as you said it's always played minders chance. favor you know they, yeah. they you know back when they put we would play Canandaigua and Victor and Newark yeah. and Geneva in our league and no matter how we fared in the league, we would always go into sectionals playing schools that were smaller than we we're used to playing on our schedule. Well, it's going to be fun. The last day of the regular season is Thursday, and then uh, the seating will take place this weekend, and uh, then the games will begin next week. And there's a nice beginning to the second half for the Penyan Mustang. Shane Bloom with the three ball. Taking advantage of that zone Waterloo is in. Got an open look. Great shot by Shane Bloom. And so 34 to 13 as we start the second half. Here's Steinruck. Drives and tries to force it over to the freshman Stenberg. And amongst the trees, he has it knocked away. He wanted the foul. One thing uh, we watching Burnett and paying a lot of attention, leading scorer, biggest guy in the court. Uh, he did not, and we have an injured player, we hope. Steinruck's down holding okay. his ankle or yeah. foot. He was up and then... Uh, and but, it went down. But Burdett uh, on that play never moved his feet. I mean, he just stood straight, put his arms up, and um, got the block. Yep. So they got the trainer out there, Scott Grove, attending to Bradley Steinrock right now, checking out his foot, make sure he's okay, uh, deciding whether he's going to come back in the game. That'll be a big loss for Waterloo if he can't play the rest of this uh, second half. Scored the first six points for Penyan. Hasn't scored since. For, uh, yeah, for Waterloo. Or for Waterloo, rather. Um, of course, that first quarter, 15 to 1. The second quarter, at least on paper, not so bad, 16 to 12. Whenever I see a kid hurt their, uh, sprain their ankle, I'm always hoping it's not the first time he's done it. Because as you know, probably both you gentlemen know, that if you've sprained it, you can think you're going to die on that next sprain, and then it gets loose enough to re-enter the contest, yeah. and you're going pretty good. Yeah, first time's always the worst. And oh pass. They connect on the bomb, but unable to finish. Inside is Burdett, and Waterloo comes away with it. Yeah, Coach Hollister going... Uh, <laughs> Going off on the official there, I, I saw a clear and place, uh, blatant push by Waterloo, no yep. call, and he's not, he's still working that same official saying, you missed that one. <laughs> I think that, that was Lewis that scored uh, for Waterloo off a nice feed. So that makes it 34 to 15. And the runner, no good. Uh, Stenberg had the last bucket, I believe. Was it Stenberg? Yeah. yeah. I apologize. No problem. As Lions at Clyde tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, right here on Finger Lakes 1. And the free throw up and in from Bloom, and he's into double digits. He's got the first four points of the half for Pena. Talked a little earlier about his double figures, four of his first five games this year, and then... Uh, you know, talking with Coach Hollister is one of those cases where teams started to zero in on him because he, he was hurting so many teams from the outside. And then the next thing you know, those three-pointers are not quite as easy to knock down when the defense starts to pay that much attention to you. And he struggled with that. Kind of put him into a slump. Still right around 30% from downtown on the year. So 36 to 15. And Stenberg drives baseline, but... Traveled before he put it on the deck. And I've noticed that Coach Panic likes to go to the towel when the frustrations mount. Not quite Jerry Tarkanian status, but. Yeah, he's carried that towel a lot th this season. 
All right, the 2-2-1 two, two, for Waterloo, trying to create a little bit of tempo for themselves. I like the uh, defensive switch he's come out with in the second half. The old UCLA box press. They fade into the 2-3 zone. Skip pass to Shane Bloom, who just hit the three a moment ago, down to nine on the shot clock. Bloom still looking to pull the trigger. We'll lob it into Burdett, who is quadruple teamed. Going to have to get the shot off with one on the shot clock. That's an air ball from Eric Johnson. And turnover sends it back to the Indians. We used to double down, but never quadruple, quadruple down. Quadruple down. <laughs> well, it worked that time. Yeah, it did. Well, a big part of it was the shot clock running down, I think, but works nonetheless. So Waterloo basketball. Hey, they're down 21, but, you know, you put a little, you know, say a 10 to 2 run together, and all of a sudden you're in the game. There's Mateo for three, no good, but an offensive rebound from O'Brien, and he's fouled. Just the problem, as I as I see that, though, guys, is they just don't seem to have that one, even one, prolific go-to guy that can can get you some points in a hurry. Obviously, they have some youth that have some potential, but um, and they you know, just don't have that. They have 15 points in 18 minutes. That's, that's right, <laughs> and they've got three wins on the season. So that you know that 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 tells you that they don't have that one go-to kid that can just take over. Um, but at the same time, defensively, they've only given up 36 points. Um, they got to score a little, you know, and, and the kids got to put the ball in the basket. And especially at the free throw line because nobody's guarding you. And now Waterloo, three of seven from the charity stripe in the game. Just thrown over the top of the zone here are the Mustangs. Burdett into the corner. Here's Bloom again. It is Bloom's day. Three. Another three. Bloom's on fire. That's uh, two threes this half and a foul shot. Two foul shots. Two yeah. foul shots. He made them both. I had to work my Bloomsday reference like in there it. for all the James Joyce fans <laughs> joining us tonight. Very good. <laughs> 39 to 15. Here's Mateo, the freshman. Back up top for Thomas France. Jonathan Jones in the corner. A pretty nice job yeah, to get to the nice basket move. and hit the floater. Yeah, that pivot's very powerful, you know. Some guys <laughs> get rattled. He pivoted to the spot in the floor that was open, and he, he made a great baseline jump shot. Okay. You know one thing I've noticed about Penyan, which Waterloo doesn't have, is Penyan has Burdett inside. And not only is he their best player, but he's anchoring this zone here, and he's communicating to the kids where the ball is, and he talks, and he's got that leadership that you really love to have as a coach, and, and it's one thing I think that Waterloo has been lacking this year. Yeah. Well, as Penn Yan tries to uh, continue their improvement over the years under their uh, coaching tenure of Jay Hollister, it's probably uh, a little more joy for the senior Burdett this year because he was no doubt with them through uh, some tougher years. Yeah, he has been on varsity since he was a freshman, and there's a three ball from Jones. And Jones now with seven, but James Burdett actually midway through his freshman year got called up to varsity and has been starting ever since. He is a three and a half year starter. So, and he has seen the team steadily improve throughout his career. Woo! There's a three ball again from Shane Bloom. Springtime, blooming early here in Waterloo. Yes it is, well, the Groundhog saw its shadow, right? He, he didn't. Or he did He didn't. Whatever. Spring I, comes I, early. Spring comes early when he didn't see his shadow. You got it. That Punxsutawney Phil always confuses me. Here we go with Shane Bloom again in the corner. Get it to him. Feed the fire. Yeah. Must be that basket and that, and particularly that left side, because remember in the Geneva game, that's where Mr. Jones went off in the first quarter that against the Geneva. Same spot. Yeah. Have you seen my wife, Mr. Jones? You don't remember that classic, do you? Uh, I, I think of <laughs> Counting Crows, Mr. Jones. Yeah, that's right. Because that was over, that pass over the head of Bloom. There's the generation gap right there. Uh, See, right? Just yeah. shows you right there. <laughs> I know the basketball Jones, right? Yeah, basketball Jones. A lot of Jones references. Indiana Jones. And sloppy there from Stenberg. Somehow Waterloo hangs oh, on. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow, they're gonna, they're gonna call a blocking foul on James Burdett and yeah. the entire Penyan contingency is in shock. And <laughs> as well as the broadcast booth. Look at Hollister, well, right? Of course, Ineski called it. 
early when you said the big guys yeah. get blamed for everything. He's I, standing I can, there. You know, I resemble the that remark. Yeah, that's right. He was anchored. He, you know, what do you want the kid to do? Jonathan Jones was dribbling his head down. Ran into and, a wall. And, and literally ran into yeah. a wall. The, the funny part about that, Burdett didn't even flinch. Well, yeah, he didn't but the either. Waterloo player did get the first down on the measurement. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. That was unbelievable. The sympathy call, maybe. Oh, I feel so bad for, for Mr. Burdett. There's a lot of people I feel bad involved in that play. <laughs> Although somehow, <laughs> well, I may have missed one. That's his first personal, I believe. Yeah, he does a good job of staying out of it, you know. Yep, he's they got him down. down. No, that's actually his third. Oh, yeah. oh, never mind, Dave. Maybe he doesn't do that good of a job. <laughs> well, uh, they'll be talking about that call on the bus ride back. Yeah, yeah they will. Uh, oh, oh. I thought the same <laughs> official was going to tag him with the little tic tac uh, breathment foul. This one's on Bloom. You know, this official's getting yelled at by everybody, both well, sides. And now the steal. And they just, Waterloo just makes it too, so easy for the opponent. Good hustle by Jonathan Jones. But they just throw the ball away too much. Unforced errors. Looks like he pulled a, maybe a thigh muscle or a hamstring or something. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's uh, limping over towards the bench. He's too young to be pulling those muscles. That's right. We should, we should actually, and I don't know the official's name, but we should give him some credit for livening things up here. Yes, that's true. Mustangs will inbound. And three for Bloom. Let's see, boys. Yeah, they set a play for him that time. Left a little bit short, but guess who? <laughs> Burdett with so the easy. offensive rebound and put back. His first uh, points of the yep. second half. 14 for Burdett. 18 is his season high. He's done it three different times. So that's the number you got to try and keep him under. As that's knocked out of bounds. You know, I was going through tabulating the season highs for all the Penyan players, and uh, a lot of them did it against Marcus Whitman. <laughs> Whitman's had a tough year down at the bottom of the FLE standings as well. Now. You're a fairly new father, is that right? That is true. And your wife is a very busy uh, uh, physician. Yes, that is true. And yet you uh, find time to get all of this statistical information. So <laughs> your wife must be a real, a real saint, let's oh, put she it is. that way. She is. Maybe... Uh, She's in line for. I like I I what I do is I and at night a lot of times I'll put the TV on a basketball game and work on my game prep and uh, keep get the it, laptop out. Yeah, and keep an eye on. Last night it was Kansas State, Kansas. Oh God, Kansas State looked and awful. Bruce Weber's team. When the games are bad, you can always flip to the Seinfeld reruns at 10 yeah, o'clock. Yeah, you can do that as well. As we continue to have the. Uh, Really, there's nobody happy with the officials in the gym right now. Nope, and, and the fans, you know, they're just making the game go a little bit longer. And the coaches are not agreeing with the calls, and the kids are getting... But the reality is, guys, and it's the same with broadcasting, when the quality of play is better, the officiating generally uh, goes better, you, as does the broadcast. Yep. It's been kind of a sloppy game. 44-20 the score, and that's, that's a, a nice shot. finish from Thomas France. Five for France. 44-22. And Mustang's able to beat the pressure. Here's Bloom, gonna take it to the rack this time, swings it to the other corner for Voigt. Mm -hmm. And he got an extra step in yeah, there on the did. little tippy toes, but couldn't finish. I think he was walking on hot coals there in the lane. And pass went right to Voigt. And if only Andrew Pearl were about oh. eight inches taller, he could dunk it, but instead he'll go for the three-point play. That's just as good when you're five foot nine. <laughs> but that's one of those cardinal sin things, Kevin. You always have at least one trailing guard to prevent that fast well, break. Not thing. on the turnover. On the shot, yes. Uh, when yeah. you throw it but right when you to, throw the other it to the other team. <laughs> <laughs> and you stand in disbelief of your own pass. That doesn't happen. There's nobody yeah. back for hard, the Waterloo Indians. Hard to rotate back when you throw it to the other team at the top of the key. And that's the Achilles heel of Waterloo I brought it up earlier, and, and it'll be the last time I bring it up. But they, <laughs> they, they got to recognize the, the white jerseys and hit their own players. Yeah, and they, they don't have a natural point guard, and, and Steinrich has done his best to man the point this year. As now, Mateo, the freshman, can play point. So, the, you know, that was yeah. the reasoning in, in bringing him up. Uh, he's a little bit better ball handler. He, 
good, he's a good passer, he sees the floor well, and he's strong with the ball, which is important. But as we all know, that's a big jump from JV to varsity. Ooh, a little extra step. Yeah, that was a nice find in the corner that time, and he picks up an assist as DJ Darling nails the three. That was a good find. And there's a steal. Not get it up. Evan yells, four on one, and the bounce pass was right to Stenberg, and hands like the face of a clock, as uh, an old coach of mine used to say. A missed layup, and the rebound no good from Walker after the Bloom layup miss. I think Bloom can only hit threes. He'll try a layup again. There, there it is. He heard you. 19 points now for Bloom. He's approaching his career high of 22 in the season opener against Newark. Got to be pleasing their coach to see him break yeah. out of that uh, cold snap. That could be the biggest thing that Penyan takes out of this game as they get ready to wrap up the season against Bath on Thursday and then into sectionals. And there's Bloom. And as a shooter, you got to keep shooting. Yeah. And uh, he's done a good job of that tonight. He hasn't seemed to shy away from anything. They, you know, we were talking a little bit before about the fact that he's gone into this slump and got a lot more attention. We'll talk about this on the other side. A, a young kid who, who gets frustrated when uh, the scoring starts to go down. We're at the end of three quarters, 49-25 your score. Penyan in command on Finger Lakes 1 TV. The Newark Pilots. See tomorrow's Major League Stars today. For more information, go to newarkpilots.com. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years, a generation... ...and what will continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch or go to mygenbank.com. Brandon Harrington, Dave Barnick, Kevin Korzaneski back with you at Waterloo High School. We are through three quarters of play, a 49-25 lead for the Penyan Mustangs who jumped out to a quick 13-1 lead tonight. And it took Waterloo all the way till this early in the second quarter before they got their first field goal. And uh, Penyan has been in command ever since. And Waterloo's been without Steinrook who went down early in the uh, third quarter yeah. with a foot or ankle injury and it uh, doesn't look like he's going to return tonight. He's got the boot, shoe off and uh, the trainer's working on him in the corner. Well, there's an impressive block from Thomas France. He's done some good things here in the second half. Yeah, Thomas France playing hard on the scene last night in the gym and uh, he only wants to go out with a little bit of style. He had 13 points against Romulus South Seneca the other night on Saturday. A lot of those games from Friday were moved to Saturday because of the snowstorm that came through, though certainly we didn't get it nearly as bad as they did on the coast over in Massachusetts. Wow, you are you got to shut down the whole state. Yeah, the pictures were impressive. Yeah, two to three feet of snow. And those poor people in Jersey who yeah, are still right. homeless to get hit by uh, that storm. What about you guys? But I haven't really caught on with this whole naming of the winter storms thing. This doesn't that work was, as well uh, as hurricanes. No, it's not you know? as exciting. Well, it's part of the uh, sensationalism to get TV ratings, yeah. quite frankly. Jim Cantori and the folks at the Weather <laughs> Channel. Yeah. Boy, good passing in transition there from Penn Yan. And then the trailer, leaving it a little bit short for three. That's Andrew Pearl with the putback. Well, we don't keep me rebounding stats up here, but the margin has to be uh, pretty large tonight. I started to tell the story before with Ben Colbert, who just had the putback. He got called up to play varsity against Minders on January 4th because there were a few of the guys from Penyan who had to go play in an all-star lacrosse tournament. And then his life as it is in Penyan, where lacrosse yeah. is so dominant. But it, it really gave Covert an opportunity. He played well against Minders, scored 10 points, and... And Coach Hollister said, there's no way I can send this kid down to JV again. And he's been up ever since and starting. Yeah, took advantage of his opportunity and uh, hasn't looked back. The old Lou Gehrig for Wally Pipp story. Yeah, there you go. Never give up your spot. But, you know, you run into that sometimes at schools where you have one dominant sport that even, you know, takes kids into the offseason. That can be difficult sometimes. I think sometimes you're better off just kind of accepting it instead of trying to fight it. And yeah, I there's agree. a rebound from... Scott Walker and he puts it back up and in. The success kind of breeds success, and you got to let the kids uh, go when they're when they're doing that. 
Coach Hollister uh, giving many of his starters generous time on the bench. Yep. 53-25 the score right now. It's been a tough night for Stenberg, who had been playing so well the last three games, and he goes tumbling underneath the basket. You can see the frustration mounting for him. As yeah, Nick's, off his, back. Nick's off his game a little bit tonight. He's kind of rushing his shots and, and forcing it. He didn't get to score early, and you learn that as a basketball player to let the game come to you and uh, everything else take care of itself, and you can't force it. And I think he's been doing that too much of that tonight. Jumper short from Walker. And that brings us back to what I brought up before as the, the foul coming up here, which is uh, he, sometimes with these high for example, you know, he has four of his first five games in double figures, Kevin. The defenses start paying attention to him more, goes into a shooting slump, and confidence becomes an issue. Yeah, it's a big mental block, and you just got to step in and shoot. And I don't know how well he was doing in practice, but you know that's got to transfer over to your games and the you know he'll be back on track for the rest of the season after tonight i think yeah and sometimes kids don't understand you know the the increased attention from the defense means that gives me a way to contribute in some other ways but they just see it as you know i got a score i got a score and there's the penetration france can't finish penyan has gone to the bench meanwhile well and actually penyan just brought back in their starters oh they're running their starters they yeah. got they got bloom back in and void and uh well i was looking at alex Burnett. alex uh, mckay yep. who is not played at all yet and does not see a ton of time so we'll see if maybe they start to come in they were nice enough not to call Burdett with the foul there as once again this time it was Mateo who ran into the brick building yeah, the official told James him. Burdett I'm, he's standing straight up what do you want me to call <laughs> well Stenberg uh, we mentioned his grandfather the sheriff his dad a state trooper oh nice at, steal there from Voigt very fine athlete at Romulus as uh, part of a I think two-time sectional football championship yeah. team. Good two finish time. from Grace there as well, Corey Grace. And Nick would always tell me that. My dad won sectionals with Romulus. I said, well, what? He's a football. I said, Romulus doesn't have football. It can't, can't be possible. Well, uh, their coach, Wayne Carroll, has yep. since put the program in Bath back on the boards for the last 15 years or so. That was a real nice drive along the baseline before from O'Brien, but he missed the reverse layup, and now... You talk about schools uh, with successful sports. How about the Hornell Red Raiders in football? They are just a machine. And what a nice facility. Yeah, they've got a good thing going down there for sure. Finally saw their ridiculous winning streak. I don't remember what it ended at, but they fell in the state championship game this year in Class C. I think it ended at 40-something consecutive games. But, yeah, they're, and it's not just football either. I mean, that's just from top to bottom an impressive athletics program down at Hornell on the southern tier. And you can see Tom Meeks check into the game for Waterloo. Six foot, 190 pound junior. The midway through the fourth quarter, it has been all Mustangs as they look to pull within one game of the 500 mark at eight and nine. And they can beat Bath Haverling on Thursday to finish at 500, and that was easy as Corey Grace takes it all the way to the bucket and scores. Yeah, too easy. Uh, and those are things, even if you don't have other certain skills, that uh, defensively you got to be just playing better basketball, fundamentals. Hey, there's a bucket from Tom Meeks. He's only scoring a total of eight points this year, but two more. Double-digit mark. There you go. Always good when uh, these kids a chance to not only get in the game, but get into the scoring column. Now on the other end, Cody Button, a guy who doesn't see a ton of time with the air ball from in close. And that will send it back over to Waterloo with 3.15 remaining. And they're going to get a walker over the top there on Stu Caps. Uh, both teams got into the bonus fairly early in the first half, but... Neither team at the bonus yet, as kind of one by one, we're seeing Penyan send their guys to the bench, and Shane Bloom will check out after a real nice performance tonight. And as we see tomorrow night's game highlighted on uh, the screen, uh, the intensity level perhaps a notch or two higher tomorrow night. Yeah, I believe it will be so, Dave. Uh, you know, those two teams always go at it, and Lions still has one, log one loss in the league. Yeah, there's a bucket from Jacob Hunt. So Hunt and Meeks doing the damage here in the fourth quarter, and it's 57-29. Wonder if that's any relation. He has the ball to more blasts 
Fame. That's right. He must be happy. And we're going to get a tie does he, up. Does he squeeze for the Ravens? I don't think so. He's not mic'd up with us tonight, so we can't find out. In fact, we can say whatever we want about him tonight. Pretty now, much. now, Jim Harbaugh is a great coach and maybe the nicest guy in the world, but do any of you guys get sort of rubbed the wrong way by by his antics? Uh, I, 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 I root for the other Harbaugh. Yeah, I, you know, Jim, I did in that Jim's game anyway. Jim's a little anyway. too intense, and, uh, you know, John, I, I like the way he handles himself. Good golf game, Jim yeah, Harbaugh. That's what I've heard. And then, of course... They have the connection to Tom Crean. Their sister married Tom Crean. Yeah, they had yeah. basketball coach at Indiana. Could be quite the year if Indiana goes on and uh, makes a run come March in the Harbaugh family. And that's a travel off the rebound. Tough break there for Jacob Hunt. So, Brendan, uh, following the sports as you do, uh, who would be your selection for collegiate? basketball player of the year if the season ended today. Oh, for the whole collegiate, uh, boy, I mean. Because they're talking about the kid from Indiana who's uh, good size, good fundamentals, but. Well, there's a couple kids from Indiana you can point to as I know Zeller gets all the attention. There's a three ball from Andrew Pearl, but uh, Oladipo all around is quite the player as well. There's Mateo with a three pointer. A lot of people think uh, Victor Oladipo is the best defensive player in the country. Yeah, he can do so many things. Uh, the kid That's actually in the corner. That was Alex McKay on the three. That's that was what McKay. I thought. Yeah, That's he's, what I thought. Uh, he's got five points on the season wow. he got down here. So he, he just doubled his point total almost in one shot. So good for Alex. I would go with Doug McDermott for player of the year. I was going to mention the kid from Creighton is. Yeah, I like him. You know, and you say, oh, he plays for Creighton, the Missouri Valley. That's uh, a I don't tough buy that. league. That is a tough yeah, league. Yeah, I don't buy it. He's he's going to be a he's going to be a good player in the pros too, I believe. And he's a he's a smart, heady player, and he's tough. Goes both ways, yeah. right and left. Good shooter. You know, he's he's tough, Doug McDermott. Oh. Uh, Shot was halfway down and came out from Cody Button. Jim just sent me a note he thinks might be C.J. Fair. C.J. Fair. I do like his game. It's consistency, but. And there's oh, Sean Penn man. from downtown. Sean Penn? <laughs> he literally just doubled his point total, Sean Peck. Yeah, he had a total of three points on the year. And he went around and in, <laughs> all the way around the rim, and it dropped in. 63-32 so, with 40 seconds left to go. He did double his scoring. He did. And that's a great shot by Sean Peck. Leave him up on the arc. You got to guard him. Yeah. <laughs> you got to guard him. Good times. 63-32 with 30 seconds left to go. As that's swatted loose. And Waterloo with the steals. Two caps. Oh, the caps crazies would have loved it. Yeah, they were waiting to explode on that one from Stuart Caps. If he had made, got that down, this place would have went nuts. And there's a layup from Cody Button. Cody That's his first field goal of the season. Wow. Oh, no. A lot of Penn Yant players getting the scoring at Thomas Meeks. Uh, oh, it looks yeah, like he's, he's going to jog it, it off. off. Yeah. All right. We don't want to see another injury tonight. So well, let's see. we got to get the uh, the hoop for uh, what's, what's the young man's name we're trying to get in the scoring column. Sean Peck? Yeah. No, no Peck uh, already got the three. For uh, Waterloo. Caps. Oh, we got Caps. we got to get Stu. Oh, Stu. Yeah. 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 Maybe Stu's Coach Panic will run a play for him here. Here he is. Isolation, Stu Caps. At the buzzer. Oh, oh my. my. <laughs> yes. Yes. The crowd goes eight. crazy. And it counts. Let's see. There we go. They got wow. the big head out. They got the big head out of the crowd, <laughs> Stu Caps. <laughs> If they put sunglasses on that picture, there it is. I would have saw, thought that was Jim Beheim. It looks, it looks a lot like Beheim, doesn't it? <laughs> Look at the big head for Stewie Caps. There it is. That's funny. Oh, but he can't. But he gets his own ball. rebound. Two more. Oh. You'll have to pay for that glass. Well, that'll do it, folks. All Penn Yan in this one, but a fun finish for, uh, for some of the kids who don't get a ton of playing time. 65 to 34 is our final. We'll come back and talk with some of the victors from Penn Yan after this timeout on Finger Lakes One TV. Attention Finger Lakes residents, have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Madame Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Madame Maris and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. 
Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Madej Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Come out to the incredible Colburn Park for a new season of Pilots Baseball and new memories for the whole family. It's a true family value. The Newark Pilots. See tomorrow's Major League Stars today. For more information, go to NewarkPilots.com. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations Bank, we greeted you by name. Continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch or go to mygenbank.com. And back with you at Waterloo High School where Penyan rolls to a 65-34 win to improve to 8-9 on the year. Brandon Harrington, Dave Barnett, Kevin Korzaneski back with you. And we're joined now by the big man for Penyan, James Burdett. 14 points tonight, doing most of his damage in the first half with 12. And uh, first of all, congratulations on the win, James. Thank you very much. <laughs> Another double-digit performance for you. Uh, you've been doing that with regularity this time. This is your 12th game in double-digit scoring this year. And uh, first of all, I, I talked with Coach Hollister earlier today, and, uh, you know, you've been there since your freshman year, right. his first season, and this team has steadily improved right, yeah. dur during your career. Talk a little bit about what it's been like, that journey, uh, since being a freshman now all the way up right. to being a senior. It's definitely been a good progression. I mean, going through the tough times at the start and then just getting better and better every single year, I think, yeah, each year we've got more wins, more wins, and we're finally in a place where we're fighting for a home game for sectionals. So that's nice. You look back at this year, and that first game of the year certainly set the tone because I think a lot of people were looking through the scores from that first night of games, and right. they yeah. saw 61-51 <laughs> Penyan over Newark, and some people said, wow, Penyan. Talk a little bit about what yeah. that win did for your team to start the year. I mean, that was awesome, and i got to give props to Coach. He got us prepared. I mean, full scouting report. We were we were ready. I mean, he got us pumped up before the game, and we knew we had to set the tone earlier in the early in the year, and that's exactly what we went out and did. Well, Jim, uh, first of all, were you afraid in the second half that that foul on you was going to be called a flagrant <laughs> foul? <laughs> I mean, you yeah. would have you would have had to have been vaporized. Uh, right. that, I mean, you were a statue there. We yeah. felt for you, man. And we felt least, for you. It, it livened the place up. Yeah. But I, I was going to ask the same questions that. Uh, 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 Brent, Brendan had uh, actually asked about the progress. So as a team now, with a, how important would it be for you to finish 500 and then head into sectionals, and how confident does your team feel as you've progressed through the years, and this year in particular? I think, I think it's huge for our team. I mean, just thinking about it's, it's really like seeing the work that we put in all throughout high school, and then it's finally coming together. And I mean, I think it's, it would go back to my eighth grade year when we went to sectional finals, bef like since we've been a relevant team, and it would be awesome just to make a run in sectionals. So. And it would have been easy for you, as well as some of your teammates, probably to, to give up. You, you had a year where you didn't win a game, and then the next year only four, and right. uh, that has to feel very satisfying. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's good to finally see the work paying off. Yeah, and, and for, for a guy like you, too, that's had success on the lacrosse field, obviously, right. yeah. with the Penyan lacrosse team, one of the best you know, programs uh, in Section 5 and in New York State, uh, you know, it's got to it's gotta feel good to see that hard work pay off in basketball as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. And, and the, I mean, the correlation between the sports is huge. Yeah. yeah Talk so a little bit about that. What, in what way? Uh, what, what similarities do you see? Like the defense, defensive rotations. Yeah. I mean, as a defensive guy myself, it's very similar and just – like the ball movement, it's all the concepts that are important. Zone in versus man to man, yeah. helping off of a defender, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I've always thought it kind of a, a, I never played lacrosse. I've always seen it as a combination of hockey and basketball. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's probably a good way to look at it. Well, talk a little bit about uh, what will be the next uh, stage for you. You have a D Division One lacrosse scholarship right. at all, but are you going to go, you and, Sh and Sean Sweeney, uh, <laughs> yeah. Shane Sweeney going to ride together or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll see. And I think I heard. 
Colin Cooper was transferring there too, yeah, so I that'll be yep. cool. A whole uh, Section 5 contingent. <laughs> yeah. And I got to think, just from listening to you, uh, James, I think your interview is as impressive as uh, you're playing the court. Uh, pretty well, thank fair you very student. much. <laughs> I imagine you're a pretty fair student. Yeah, I definitely, my family's got some importance in the classroom too, so. Yeah, definitely. Are you uh, you stocking up on Great Danes uh, paraphernalia already? <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. Right, outstanding. One qu quick question about the team too before we let you go. I wanted to talk about a teammate of yours. Uh, talking with Coach Hollister today, said Shane Bloom had kind of been in a shooting slump. How important was it for for him to have a game like this today, where he got it going from three point land and moving ahead right. uh, into sectionals? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's going to be huge for us just moving forward. And I mean, I think sectionals is all about getting hot at the right time. So I mean. Shane's on, the whole team's on. We could definitely make a run here. All right, one more question about that foul you got called for, for standing still. Uh, did you actually feel Jonathan Jones run into you? Because you didn't flinch. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the ref said I wasn't in a defensive position or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, for, it did liven things up for, for everybody. Your fans, it gave them something to complain about. And uh, yeah. Although when a game is lopsided like this, as I had mentioned, yeah. uh, it's uh, – more difficult to officiate in yeah. some ways. Yeah, too. no, definitely. The funny thing is, James, that when I talked with Coach Hollister earlier today, he actually brought up how you never get the benefit of the doubt with the officials, and they tend <laughs> to pick on you a little bit. And I certainly believe him now. <laughs> but that may even up <laughs> when sectional play right, begins. Definitely. So let's hope so I for hope the sake so. of yourself and your Penny and Mustangs. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations, James. Uh, a great year for you individually and your team as well, and a nice win tonight. Thank and you best very of much. luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for lot. joining us, and good luck. Thanks. <coughs> Great student athlete there, and James Burdett, both uh, on the lacrosse field and on the basketball court as well. 14 points for him tonight, 19 points for Shane Bloom to lead the overall impressive win for, for Penyan. We know it's been a tough year for Waterloo as they fall to 3-14, and 1-14 and of the conference. Penyan will finish league play at eight and eight, and that is uh, that's not a small accomplishment in the Finger Lakes East when you consider that six of your league games right off the bat are going up against the likes of Geneva Wayne and Newark, a Newark team that they actually beat. You know, historically, actually, I'm going back to uh, I think the 70s, 80s, maybe early 90s. The Penyan girls teams were traditionally strong, so credit Jay Hollister. You know, the other folks that I wanted to really tip my hat to tonight. Uh, Number one, the seniors long suffering for a season like this for Waterloo, but all the parents. I mean, it's really the kids get recognized at senior night, but the parents who you know do the laundry, make the trips, um, and and suffer it, it suffers so much when their kids uh, don't perform as well as they'd hoped for. So. Well, yeah, it's it's tough to sit through as a parent in a season like this, and I think I mentioned it earlier. Everything gets magnified, um, everything gets a little bit harder, a little bit worse. You see it in professional sports and collegiate level too. When when things go wrong and they're not supposed to, it just seems to, you know, keep going and going into a domino effect. And uh, yeah, give the parents a lot of credit for coming out and supporting the kids and uh, the coaches and the community. Well, the great thing about athletics guys and, and a big part of why, why we love them is they do provide life lessons as well. And for these kids who go through a tough year like this, staying with it, seeing it to its completion instead of giving up, um, you know, those things are going to pay off in the long run when you talk about life. So A lot of life lessons. Definitely, definitely. Well, uh, a great time. This is my last broadcast uh, for the basketball season. Been a pleasure, Jim Sinecropi. Uh, appreciate you bringing me on this year for basketball season. Our producer and director and uh, owner of Finger Lakes 1, Dot com and uh, Jeremy Hunt on camera and uh, guys, uh, it was fun doing the three-man booth. It, it was, was nice. Uh, I want to. It was a nice to get to work with you, yeah. Brendan. And I want to remind both of you, gentlemen, and certainly Mr. Sinecropi as well. Make sure you don't forget Valentine's Day. When that, is it? That's a good Two piece. Days. Talk about life lessons. There's a lesson that you need to learn early on. Don't screw up Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> I'll remember right. that. We'll leave you with that. Fair warning. We'll leave you with that. For, for Jim Sinecropi, Jeremy Hunt, Dave Barnick, and Kevin Korzaneski, I'm Brendan Harrington. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. And tomorrow night, big showdown in Wayne County. So long, everyone.